Well, hello. Welcome to another video, Make It Song Ringer. Today I'm working on placing some new mobs um, using some of the new enemies in the arena um, in other areas of the game. This one, um, I'm placing just one single pattern onto the overworld for the core game. So this will affect the game even if you don't have the ring of difficulty. Um, where there's this really difficult mob, sort of like, almost like a mini boss here. You'll get rewarded quite well if you beat these guys and get some like, nice diamonds or something like that. Um, but it's only in this really difficult to get to place. This is, uh, you can see this is at a dead end um, on, of the overworld in an area that basically is super difficult to get to. And um, it's something that, uh, you know, if you're doing a speed run of the game, you're never going to come across this because you're not going to go that deep in the game. If you're doing a normal run of the game, you're only going to come across this once you've found some advanced items to get past the gates of the overworld. And after you've explored really deeply, uh, maybe even after you're going all the way for 100% items um, and map, if the, you're going to come across something like this. So um, I think this is okay to throw this in there. It's nice. It adds a little spice to the, to the core game. So um, I've just verified something. Uh, um, I basically changed the height or the depth of these these guys. Oh, what happened here? It's so weird. Man. It's like I have the This is a weird map. Okay, maybe I accidentally clicked hit the. might have been one of my debug commands, hopefully. Um, anyways, I changed his depth just slightly so we could get through those uh, rocks there, and um, I made sure that the arena fight is still just the same, basically, so really didn't change that him, him much at all, except to allow him to move through tighter spaces. Um, but now what I'm doing is I'm verifying that the pattern, by adding that pattern to the overworld, one single pattern, did it change the other patterns of the game much at all? I don't think it will because it's only one of them and the way the patterns work is that sometimes it does change things. If there's a repeat of a certain pattern, it won't, it won't repeat the pattern. So this is only one pattern. I don't think it'll affect it much, but let's check. So I just basically ran the game uh, as it was and then I ran the game with the new pattern and I'm gonna go compare all of these together using a diff. Right on. Okay, so it's just 770 and 870. All right. So it did change the pattern directly to the right of it. I thought that was a secret area, though. 870, huh? Hmm. Check that out. That used to be Cratchews, now it's Blobs. It's really not that much of a difference there. I wish there was a way to keep it exactly the same, right? Isn't that, am I now, now at 870? Yeah, this is a secret area anyway. Well, Let's do this test again with a different world seed. Is there some way I can just... I would have to kind of hack things up.
Yeah, I guess I could add, like, if I really wanted to keep the world exactly the same, I could add something like a flag, like, last or something like that to the end of this. And then I would have to write some new code in the add foes algorithm. It basically said, okay, do this for everything but the last, and then do this for only the last. That would, uh, it's just like, it's a lot of work for something that really is not affecting the game that much. Let's just, let's verify this with some, a couple other world seats first. Oh man, maybe this actually should be ne would be necessary because of what I'm going to do next, which is to add some different mobs depending on the ring of difficulty, but shoot. I think that's fine because it's, you're getting the ring of difficulty and that's a new item. Okay, stop, stop overthinking it here and just proceed with the different world seed test. Let's try Vel, another of my favorite yet somewhat familiar worlds. Okay, now I'm gonna go start without it. Now, let's find where it actually put it. Oh, it didn't put it anywhere, of course. Lime, what's up, man? Howdy. How you doing, man? How's school? Copy everything from the log again. Has the game met my expectations? Um, well, okay. I'll, I'd love to talk about that. Actually, I'll share, I'll share some lessons I learned. Um, yeah, so I, I I tried my hardest all throughout Songbringer to not have any expectations. Um, as a matter of principle, um, I found in life that most expectations are simply just traps, or at least in my in, for myself, at least that like you know when you have an expectation, either either the thing happens how you expected it, right? And maybe you get some satisfaction from that, but that's like a pretty, pretty low percentage of the times that things happen, right? You, you get a, you, that things actually turn out the way you expect, right? Most of the time, things don't, or they turn out a little bit differently, right? And that leads to disappointment, I've found in a lot of cases. Another thing that's really bad about expectation, at least in my experience, is that um, it takes you out of the moment. You, when you have expectations, and that's and that's that goes for dreams as well as fears, right? All positive expectations or negative expectations, they take you out of the moment. They 
instead of instead of being excited to do something, you're excited about what that thing might be a result for you in the future. So, so that said, I tried to have no expectations whatsoever. When I was going through the Kickstarter, I didn't even look at the graph of of like um, funds coming in and things like that. Yeah, right. It takes you taking you out of the moment. Um, so, but. Still, still, despite all of my trying to not have expectations, I did. And when it came to the game's release, like I was, I was, I expected that it would do pretty well. I was like, gosh, this is, you know, I felt that Songbringer was a great game and that it deserved to make a certain amount of sales. And so I thought, you know, anything less than a certain amount of sales will just be a failure. And, um, and I didn't really understand that how crazy our today's market is as far as, how many games are being released right now versus how many players there are like in in to put it really shortly you know we have a player graph that's going up steadily but barely right so like you know a few years ago we had a million players now we have like a million point one point one million players for example it's just it's barely going up but when it comes to games released like three years ago, we had like a couple hundred games released on Steam. Today, we have a couple, like thousands of games released on Steam. So it's like a, a tenfold increase in number of games. So players have a situation where they have, it's a, they have so much supply, very little demand. And it's a, there's a concept called business cycle. This happens to a lot of businesses and a lot of industries. And also the video game business has already been through this kind of cycle before. Back in the, I think it was the late 70s or the early 80s, something like that. Um, so anyways, to put it shortly, yes, I had some expectations that Songbringer is a good enough game that it should make a certain amount of sales. And it didn't, so I was super duper disappointed for a little while. But then I realized, you know, that to be, to be quite honest, like, um, for it to even succeed at all in this market is, is a hugely good thing. And I'm just going to take, you know, whatever I can for it. And I'm trying to learn my lesson and how to not have expectations in the future. Um, and I think that really the only way to do that is to just focus on the moment and just enjoy what you can. And like, right, I really enjoy making games. So that's enough for me. If a game succeeds and I'm, or if I'm able to just pay my bills and get, get through making the game, that's enough, right? That's a success. It doesn't have to make millions of dollars, but still... One day I kind of would like to make millions of dollars, right? So I don't know. It's a tough thing. Expectations. Gosh, sorry, sorry to go like super duper deep into that, but um, I hope that kind of answered your question. Yeah, no, it definitely didn't turn out like that. So thankfully, yeah, it wasn't like a flop. A financial flop it was if it was definitely a financial success for me on my end um, so but barely right we're talking like um, yeah so like I'll, I'll be able to make the next game for sure but um, but it's it wasn't the great super duper amazing success that I kind of had hoped for but it's still a success right that's amazing especially in a difficult market like it is right today. I, in fact, I'm curious about that. How many games were actually released on Steam last year? I already looked this up. I think I did. Six thousand games on Steam. I think that was. See, look at this. Ah. Six thousand release. Uh. You're considering delaying to get more PR. Right, right, right. I hear you. So it might have released, seven, there might have been 7,000 games in 2017. But that, see that? It's almost as many games released just in 2017 as there were in the 10 previous years to 2015. This is pretty significant, right? It just means that your game is released. It doesn't matter how great your game is. You're going to be one of 
many. One of very many. And it seems like the only games that are succeeding really big right now are the games that have some super compelling... They're just super duper compelling. They make you want to buy it right then. And most games don't have that, whatever that magic is, you know? You're worried that you release it and no one will see it. See, that's that's where um, that's where your following comes in, um, and I've always been a proponent of of building a following. You're on your own, right? Can you can you honestly say that if you were to release it right now, that you have enough of a following that it would make some money? You know what I mean? That's that's kind of how I approach the Kickstarter too. It's like I didn't expect Kickstarter to bring in the enough backers, right? I expected myself to bring in enough backers by having a following, or the or the following to bring in enough backers. That's why I, I did these live streams. That's why I, I built a, a following on Twitter and Facebook and everything. I, I I just kept on sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing until enough people were excited that I was like, okay, now there's a there's a group of people I know could would back the Kickstarter. So are you at the point right now where you feel that you have enough of a following for your game that it would do somewhat well? Uh-huh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you're having to, to license mu uh, music for your game, huh? Because you have a lot of it, right? This is, we're talking about, um, is this, a, this is, you, are, you already released that other game, right? This is, a, this is a new game, or? Yeah, and it's something you can build, you build it steadily, but it's not something that you build overnight, you know? It's like something that you just gotta like, keep doing, keep building your following. Oh, it's Project Rhythmia, right. Okay, so that wasn't officially released before? Was it on early access or something? Solar Liquid, what's up, man? Okay, so it's around 1,500 cop games more than last year, but that's that's good. This is less, less of a. Oh, also, you're working on a VR. Yeah, Steam Direct. I wish there was more barrier to entry to Steam. Yeah, right? With VR? So how many were there in 2016? Yeah, it was about 5,000. Now there's about 7,000. Hopefully we see this graph of game releases start to like level off and then perhaps decrease. You know what I mean? I personally, I just wish that, there's a lot of good games being released, but like there's a lot of noise too, like not good games. And I don't mean that as judgment to anybody's game. I'm just saying like, you know what I mean? There's definitely some games, some, not, a, not even games. Some of them you can, you, or just products. Oh, okay, it's a beta key. I know, right? Yeah. I thought green light wasn't too bad of a thing. This is the this is the key cro concept right here. Some people will argue that Steam is too open at the moment. And while you want to avoid talented would-be developers being priced out, it should also be easy for us users to log on without being bombarded with rubbish. Right? It's kind of the core of the concept there. Yeah, right. It's like early YouTube. Um, right, yeah. What I'm doing right now is I'm adding some of new mobs to the game based on the new enemies that are going into the, the arena and everything else with this new major update. It's almost an expansion, really. This is like almost a free DLC. 
for Songbringer. So I got foes, foes one, foes two. Yeah, Solar Liquid, there's so many new items in this, uh, in this update. There's the charged attack where you can charge up the sword. There's a parry ability. There's a shirt armor, so you can get a shirt that protects you. Um, there's called the ferret drones, which help you find 100% items. There's two new crafting um, weapons. There's the flamethrower, which is a combination of the lighter, lighter and something else. There's the hyper boots, which are super duper cool. Yeah, you're welcome, Lime. I'll show you the Hyper Boots, actually. They're super sweet. I just did this last night. So the Hyper Boots um, were originally just something that was like an upgrade to the boots where you would run super fast. But the Hyper Boots actually leave a trail of little lightning mines now. So you can send enemies on, like, check it out. So if I have the Hyper Boots, you leave these little lightning mines, and then when an enemy touches it, it sets off some lightning. That's kind of cool. You can run fast and it's a weapon. Is the sound working for you guys? I forgot to check this. Okay, cool. It does look like I got some sound. Yay. How did I handle simultaneous release on all those platforms? That was all thanks to my publisher. Yeah, I know, Nintendo still is, huh? Christmas Land? Yeah, so thankfully I have an amazing publisher backing me right now. Um, Double Eleven, they're super awesome. And they're the ones that basically did all the work for um, porting Songbringer to PlayStation and Xbox and publishing it on PlayStation and Xbox and getting it approved on those platforms and like all that kind of stuff. That is freaking a lot of work and takes money and all that. And they've also been funding the development ever since the Kickstarter funds ran out. Um, and they've also funded things like getting the game to GDC and E3 and all that. And um, I'm just like eternally thankful to these guys. They're an amazing publisher because they've just let me do Songbringer however the heck I want it. It's so awesome. Yeah, that's that's been really amazing. And that was through the Kickstarter. So like they found me because I was doing a Kickstarter and they're like basically they approached me and said, "Look, if your Kickstarter fails, we'll we'll back you." Um and then the Kickstarter succeeded and I was kind of like, "Well, I don't really need any backing." But later on I I recontacted them and I was like, "You know what? Maybe we should we should talk about like how to get the game on PlayStation and Xbox because I knew I couldn't do it myself." Um, I looked at how much work it would be and I was like, whoa, I have to basically rewrite my whole game engine for both of those platforms. You know what I mean? Xbox, totally different engine. PlayStation, totally different engine. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, let's do this again. Okay, that only changed the one little thing. I think this is not too much to worry about. So what I was basically just checking there was that, um, so I added this new faux pattern and um, I wanted to see if it changed the world around too much. So let's go to that area, 15-5-0. We'll see what that's like to fight these guys. So, yeah, there's a bunch of new enemies, too. Um, oh, there's a whole new boss. There's a whole arena full of new enemies and, and a boss. Oh, this is kind of interesting. It threw it here near this store. Huh. Oh, this is kind of a dead end, though. You tried getting five publishers? Oh, yeah? Beat Saber? No, I haven't. Thanks, Solar. Um, Beat Saber trailer. Let me, um, let me copy it, a link to it, and I'll save it for later. Because I don't want to, like, get this video um, copyright infringed. 
Beat Saber, sweet. This one looks about right. I'll check that out. Yeah, so man, what do you do when you want a publisher but they don't like they've been rejecting you? Um, personally, yeah, but it's it might have audio. That's what I'm saying is it might have audio. Um, that is copyrighted and that would trigger a flag on this video. It happens all the time. I'm always having to go in and like edit video because like YouTube flags it for copyright infringement. Oh, 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 cool. Yeah, so I don't know, I guess, I don't know, if I were in your shoes, I would try and just to be honest, like really, this is what I would do. Like it might, it might suck, man. But just I, if I were you, I would self-publish. I don't know. Maybe this is. It might be. Maybe I'm stepping too far to try and give you advice on this. But like, I don't know. I'm just gonna say it anyways. I would. I would publish now. Like right now. Go tackle your fears head on right now and get this out of the way so that you can. If it does succeed, great, that's awesome. But if it doesn't, you're best, you're best making your next game anyways. You know what I mean? Your time is, I think your time is best spent making, making either something new or, um, you know what I mean? Put you in that creative state rather than this state where you're at right now where you're almost hesitant to release. Oh, yeah. Oh, just a publisher for console. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Maybe I can add some more flags for this. Like, there's doors. Oh yeah, it's something like this I think would work well if we did. Yeah. Like make sure there's only one door going in or out of this area. Yeah. Empty, regular, open wall, locked and unlocked don't apply, gate applies, but backtrack does not. Are there any other door types we would want here? So what I'm trying to do here is make it so this, um, these only appear when there's a dead end, a true dead end. Oh, yes, yes, my, uh, I am actually completely moved. Um, it's been a big life change. I'm actually in Thailand right now. Um, but basically, to put it shortly, my, uh, uh, I broke up with my, with my woman. So we, we broke up. It was a mutual thing. And, um, yeah, I'm kind of just, like, rebuilding my life. Because <laughs> it, it was pretty painful, but, um, now all the pains is the brunt of it's over, and uh, things are going quite well now. It's actually been, it's actually turning out to be one of the best things that ever happened to me. Called the light, a lot of important lessons I needed to learn.
Secret open or secret path might be... No, actually, yeah, just one regular entrance. Let's see, okay. Let's see how that goes. Changing it around a little bit. So we got... The difficulty, too, could be increased as long as we just... Or the de it could be decreased as long as there's only one door in or out of this area. Because I don't want it to be in that kind of area we just saw there where it had two uh, paths because that's sort of like an area. I want this to be a dead end. Thank you, Solar Liquid. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you for, thank you for that, guys. Appreciate it. Um, but another benefit of being here in Thailand is it's pretty awesome. I like being here a lot. Um, if anybody, yeah, if anybody's watching this video on YouTube, you should definitely check out Lime Studios' uh, trailer for Project Arrhythmia. It's not absolute garbage like he's saying. It's a fun game. It's got super duper awesome music. Foes one, foes two. Okay, yeah, let's see where this ends up. If it even ends up in this world, we want it to hit somewhere. Just a difficult dead end, that's all we want. Cool, so that's back to some old enemy patterns. Yeah, Thailand's a sweet place, I really like it. Um, people are very relaxed, they're very immediate, like you can make things happen so fast here. Uh, like for example, getting an apartment to live in um, is something that happens in like an hour, you know what I mean? You can just show up at a place and rent an apartment that day for a month or three months or six months or whatever. Like compare that to North America where it takes weeks and a process and an approval of thinking about stuff. Okay, let's compare. Where did it put? Did it put this anywhere actually? Oh, there it is, yeah. It did, 14.3. Oh yeah, oh the demo, that must be what I played, yeah? The demo. It was a couple years ago you shared it with me. Okay, is this a dead end? Looks like it. Good. This is good. We got this. Oh no. Is that guy? What was that? Oh, he's walking on water. I didn't know these guys can walk on water. Okay. This is a good thing to add, to add that little predicate so that it puts it at a dead end. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. But see, so that just kind of hammers home the point we were talking about before, is that it almost doesn't matter how good your game looks or how great your game plays these days because there's so many other games out there that also look good and play well. What matters for sales more than anything is almost like how compelling it is. Would you buy your game instantly? You know, or would, would someone else buy your game instantly without even thinking about it, you know? Yeah, it's about hooks. Exactly, hooks. Yeah, there was actually a, a Gama Sutra article about that. If you just search for Gama Sutra, Sutra and hooks, I think.
Or if it has anime girls. Exactly. That's a compelling thing, right? It is. It totally is. Yep, it's things like that. It's almost like gimmicks, but but hooks. You know, it's like that's what sells games. Um, okay, let's do this. That was good to put those there. So let's copy the foes. Let's see if this changes the foes less. And then we'll run it again without this. Super hot. So why why is super hot a good example? That's the one where everything's red, right? And it's a 3D game, but you what is it you something about dying and respawning? Okay, let's make sure this these faux patterns have not changed too much. Okay, so it changed 14.3 and 15.3. Okay, this is good. This is a good sign. See, we're seeing it change the one pattern where it is placing this, but then it's also changing the one pattern after it. In both of my world tests, this has done that, which means that it's really not changing that much. This is a slight change to the overworld. Oh, time only moves when you do. That's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Hooks like that are super compelling because people are like, whoa, I've never played a game like that before. And as long as it has decent graphics and decent sound and decent publishing and marketing and all that kind of stuff. Okay, that's good. Now let's check. Um, world Seed Wizard. We'll check one more world just to make sure. So what I'm basically trying to do here is add something to the core game. This will go into Songbringer. It's core game. Everyone will get this without really changing the world that much. So basically it's just adding one difficult faux mob to the overworld in a, in a distant dead end corner of the overworld, there will be a super rewarding but difficult pattern. Kind of makes the overworld a little bit more interesting basically. Oh good, in this one it only changed one area. This is a good sign, either it's changing like two areas, which is done in most of these cases, or it's only changing one, which is even better. This is doable. Okay, let's check out world one, or area 150 in this world.
What time is it for you guys right now? It's early in the morning, right? Early in the morning, that's that's relative. <laughs> it's the morning, right? Ah, we're getting stolen. Yes, good, 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 good. Let's put this in a dead end once again. Before it was luckily in a dead end. Now it's purposefully in a dead end. Oh, it's one in the morning. What? I keep on doing my math wrong, man. Yeah, man, it doesn't hurt. It does not hurt to try. It's 3 a.m. for you? Jeez. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why I'm basically just streaming at a time that's kind of comfortable for me in my life right now, which is like, this is basically, what time is it? I don't even know. But it's the afternoon. This is when I always stream, usually is like around 2 p.m., right? This is what I used to back in the States. But yeah, so it's late for you guys. But um, I've been meeting some new people that way over here on these streams. I can't stream every day too because sometimes in Thailand the internet just doesn't even work. Which is a super Thai thing to happen. Just like, whoops, can't use, can't do a live stream today. Oh well. <clears throat> One door shut, another door is open. Okay, there. That's what I'm talking about. There's, see what I'm saying? There, I think there's a guy there. Yeah, he's right here. He's just chilling. Okay, I need to fix that. That's not cool. Oh, I think I know what's going on. Okay, I should check one more world before I do this, but basically what ha needs to happen is if... Oh, it didn't move him. Hmm. Nice. Okay, yeah, one more world. Um, Megacy, what should we do? How about Cookie? Chip tune and dubstep, huh? Cool. Oh wow, that changed this world more than a little. Oh, that's probably because it put it at the very beginning maybe? No, it's put it at 10-4. 
It must have been. Uh, it must have had something to do with the difficulty it being able to put a certain pattern there. Hmm. Nice. Nice. That's cool, dude. Your own data format? Sweet. <laughs> Have you guys seen that video where they made um, a Steam controller play music? based on it rumbling. Okay, so in most cases this does not change the overworld patterns that much, but in this particular world it does change the overworld patterns. Why is that? Why would it change 010 so much? Probably because 010 in this world is a potential match. I'm kind of making this too complicated. Hmm. Yeah, totally. There's somebody that played a... Let me see if I can find the video for you guys. Um, I think it was Doom Music played on a Steam controller with code. That's what, was, that's what made me think your comment about code singing. Yeah, this is it right here. This guy basically wrote some code that plays music on a Steam controller using its rumble. And it's all, it's like all, you should check, definitely check this out. Or it might have been this one. I don't know. Hopefully it's that one. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. If it's the right video, you'll see his code a little bit. Be right back. Right. Okay, I decided I'm getting too sidetracked about a minor technicality. It's something I can I can solve this in a different way. So it's good to know that World Seed Cookie has that somewhat of an issue in the sense, well let's see, let's go. Let's copy this stuff here to a note. And I'm going to go focus on the more creative aspects that need to be handled here. Namely, is this fun? And does it work properly? Why isn't it working? It's not even on. Is 
So yeah, you can see that this guy is just hiding right here. There's a hidden entity right there. And he's supposed to be off the screen, so I'm going to fix that. This is more important than the technicality thingy. So he's supposed to go sequence hidden if he's index zero, count viper fires greater than one. Set to position way over here. Why is that failing? I don't know. Let's find out. So we'll go to the AI system. Behavior position. Set position, X, Y, Z, parse position. Yeah, I should be doing that right there. <laughs> that would be sweet. I think the code is available for that, for that Doom song somewhere i think he posted it originally like on some forum or something He's getting past it. He's doing attack three. Attack four? Why is that? He's not even running that bit of his AI. Maybe his index isn't zero? Well, it has to be. He's not visible. Ah, oh, his index must not be zero. Wait, so it's running it for 587 and 589 and then continually. Oh, because there's a thief. Oh. That explains it. Okay, it adds the thief. How does it add the thief again? Uh, no, iTerm isn't 
like Vim. iTerm is just a terminal app. Vim is just the app I'm using within iTerm. See, uh, I'm actually in a terminal here, right? You know, CD, current, L, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm, v is my Vim command. So V just goes back into Vim. Oh, Emacs, what you meant? Yeah, I don't. I don't actually. I haven't given up on Xcode. I've just um, stopped using it primarily. So I normally close Xcode and don't even use it. And I use um, Xcode in the background. So I, what I'm doing is I'm compiling Xcode from the command line. I have not tried VS Code because it doesn't have all of the stuff that I would need. In a um, in an editor, but uh, I've gone I've gotten so happy with Vim that I probably will never go back to using um, a software based. I mean, like a not a software based, but like a a GUI based code editor. I really prefer this textual code editing now because it's so much faster, so much faster for finding functions and so much more customizable. Yeah, Xcode crashed all the time, and it was frequently was slow to look up functions and stuff like that. Yeah, it was. It was. It kind of gave me some troubles. But Vim has been amazing. After I've, I guess, the the hard part about Vim is the learning curve and getting getting it just the way you want it, because that was the that was the problem for me was that I wasn't really having Vim the way I wanted it, and so it didn't quite gel with me until I really learned to customize my Vim RC and then it started like really taking off. I'm like, whoa, there's so much you can do to make it just how you want it. I really like Vim these days. Okay, so it's it's adding a thief. Here we go. I want the thief to be up on the end of the list though. So I think what's happening is that it's adding the thief and then later it's adding on other foes. So that's why it's foe in, the foe index for the thief is zero and the two vipers are one and two. And that's messing with the vipers AI. Jeez, I didn't expect all these super technical, tricky issues today. <laughs> expectations, there we go, we're back to expectations. Uh, how do I get through this in a simple fashion? Hmm. I know, banana. When all else fails, eat a banana. I guess I could sort the thief last always. 
is that really the right way to do it? It might be better to make the Viper's AI more robust. See you, Silver Liquid. Catch you later. Or, or I can create a relative index. Hmm. Are they? Why is that? You mean best tasting or like best for you or? I guess, yeah, a relative index would be the way to make this AI work, regardless of what other AI are, in, are there in the screen. That would be better than trying to hack, it, hack around the thief and adding it just the right way. Definitely that's the weak, weak sauce way to solve this problem. The strong sauce way is to make this AI better. It tastes great the great for cooking and putting in drinks, right? Oh yeah, fried bananas, that's a really great thing, right? Putting it in smoothies too, you can always like add these to just about any smoothie. Oh, how about this, if index zero relative Yeah. Okay, so let's add the word relative to the AI system so it can test an AI's index based on the number of Oh man, I don't want that to be so tricky though.
It's almost like an AI's index should always be relative, and in fact, I think that might be the better, best way to do it. Because I think the only times I've even used this index is for the arena enemies, and the arena enemies that it does apply to, I think, are only... Only, they're only being applied like applied relatively. Let me check that out. If index, where is that being used? Viper fire is the only one. Really? No, there's a target index as well. Yeah, blob four small. Okay, so there's two uses of the index, and it's I think it's only for blob four small and for viper four. Okay, so I think that would work if I go to create names, basically just turn all the indexes into relative indexes. We should be good to go. The index is just, it's just a variable that the AI component has. So the AI component is just a, basically a structure. It's got all this stuff about behavior trees and stuff like that, but it's got a few different individual variables. One of them is an integer mode, another one's integer index. And the index is sim simply zero for the first enemy, one for the next enemy, two for the next enemy, blah, and so on, right? Um, so what I was just saying there kind of out loud was that index is only being used by these two specific AI. One of them targets, this one is where it targets a certain exact index. Another one is where it um, tests to see if its index is a certain number. And they're only being applied relatively and I, be, I mean that as in index zero, as in it's the only blob four, or it's like the first blob four, or the second blob four, or whatever. And then the vipers, it's only the, the first blob viper and the second viper. So I think the smartest way to do this is to make index only be relative. Or shoot, maybe I could add an int relative index as well as an index. Nah, I think a smarter way to do it is to make all indexes relative. Because it's not like I would want a blob to reference a certain index of Viper. You know, that's never, I can't really see a use for that. Okay, I'm just going to go with my instinct here. Okay, so here's where it's applying the index. Just make this smarter. Instead of using I, we need to count up the existing AI with this name. It's not too hard. So I'm looping over all AI components that have already been created. Actually, we should loop over entities that are part of this area. So it's not counting any foes from a different area.
we use this entity get to get the AI component otherwise continue component class e it oh this is uh, backwards there and then if uh, we also want the profile component So the index is going to be count plus one, or no, just count, right? So if we have zero, that's going to be an index of zero. If we already have one, it's an index of one, yeah. Okay, so I can verify this by just stepping through it as soon as it creates an AI. And I'll need to test the Vipers and the Blob 4s to make sure they still behave correctly. Ah, but this is going to fix one little bug, one little issue. Okay, so we're creating the thief. Okay, we want to go down here. Oh, that is the thief. All right, good. So yes, plus plus count, we have one thief already. Oh, that's counting the entity we've already created. So we want to do this before before we actually create this guy. So store the relative index.
Okay, this is actually kind of an inefficient loop. This actually should be id over all AI components. And then a test of contains entities id. So that's, that'll make this loop faster because there's going to be way less AI created than there are entities in an area. Sometimes there's thousands of entities. And for every AI created, this will be a lot more efficient to basically loop over a small set of AI components, loading them to make sure they're there, and then just checking to see if it's inside the entity after it's a good, we know it's a good AI component. So that's going to be basically more efficient in theory. All right, so then we got relative index pumped up before we create the being, and then we can go here to e.ai to index equals relative index. Okay, let's check that out. Okay, so we're creating the Viper Fire. Oh, there probably was already only one of them. Right, so that's relative index is increase by one. Oh, what's this fly, the multiple flies? That makes sense. Okay, now let's see. Set a breakpoint here instead. This will verify. Okay, so the thief, for example, the thief would have had the correct index because I was zero, but it's only because it's the first entity. Um, it's relative index is also zero, but here's where we're gonna start seeing a better thing, because we had, we had Viper Fire, would have had index one for the first one, but this has a relative index of zero, so thankfully that's correct now. Now the next Fire Viper is gonna have, would have had an index of two, but it should have a relative index of one now, Good, okay, and then flies, or this is zero. He has a relative index of zero. The first butterfly, first fly, second fly, etc. Okay, that is working. Let's turn off Xcode and continue on with the tests here. So first of all, what should happen is in this very screen where we're working on at first, the, uh, the Viper should not be just sitting there in the middle of the screen. He should be off screen until you kill the other one, and then he should warp in because his index test will be correct. So there he is, he's right there. Okay, good, he warped away.
guess I do need to see these collision boxes to make sure this works. Good, and that guy warped in. Okay, good. That worked fine. Awesome. Now let's. Um, I'm going to verify that the the two forms of AI that use this in the arena still work. Let's go to the arena, and we'll test out these two entities. That's taking up so much CPU here. I know, right? There's a lot of debug text there. It's because I have to be in that mode for it to show the collision rectangle. No, I guess I could do some other collision or verbosity levels. Let's see, I think that one. Yeah, there's this one. Still has a lot of debug text, though. Oh, pretty much have to do this. Oh, wait, this one. This one's nice and clean. Kind of. Okay, so there's this wave. We can just ignore these first couple waves. But this wave right here, this is what we're talking about. Okay, good. I did not see this guy warp in right here. Good. That worked as expected because these relative indexes are just smarter in general, I think. So next should be at least this is, the, this is this wave. We need the next wave after this. So we'll just cheat to kill all these guys. Okay, so here's the wave with four blob fours. These guys have a lot to their... That's so crazy. These guys keep getting knocked off, off the screen like that. These guys have a lot to their AI that makes them special. So they're good. Okay, that worked. I would like to see that again because that kind of seemed like it messed up right there. Good. Okay, so so far this is working just fine. I think this is acceptable stuff to check in. Let's mess with the pattern though, and we'll set up this arena so it goes straight into that fight. Make it a little easier to test. Four blob fours. especially have to, should be checked here is when one of them starts to want to reform that's when things start getting interesting with this AI Thank you, man. I appreciate that line. Yep, I have no training, no formal training in music. Um, <laughs> at first, I thought that was an advantage. I was like, yeah, my style is going to be so unique because I had no formal training. But I don't think that actually happened. You know what I mean? Your style is influenced by the things you hear. And we all hear things. It doesn't matter whether we have formal training or not. 
Formal training, I think, just kind of helps. Yeah, these guys are working fine. Cool. Yes. All right. We're going to check that in. Relative indexes. That's a smart move. Let me just check that. So basically, all I've changed is area creation for that will commit. Yes, I did. I did see Blade Runner 2049. And... Uh, Tell me what you're about to say. Um, I think I have a feeling. Are you talking about the, the sound design from that movie? Because it was amazing. Right? Also, the photography for that movie was off the charts. So amazing. Like, just so many scenes. You're like, whoa, I just want to take a picture of that scene. Um, who made the music for that? Okay, good. So all I changed was this. All it is is changing the index to relatives. Store the relative index. Let me just verify. Loop over all the AI components. If this entity has an AI component and a profile component and it's part of this area and the profile matches the current name, then that's an increase of the relative index. This is all done before it creates the being so that the relative index for the first one is zero. Right, yeah. Oh, he, Hans Zimmer was involved, but it wasn't him because of the bass. Yeah, the bass was good, right? Gosh, it makes me want to see that movie again right now, just for the, the sound and the cinematography. Yeah, epic, dude, epic. Oh, have you seen, um, speaking of like really good sound design, have you seen the new um, Voltron animated series? <laughs> oh, oh, Hans Zimmer is all about the bass, oh. Oh, I don't even know who Hans Zimmer is, so that's why. Right? I love the sound in that. Like the sound of like the ships passing by and the way like the lasers all build up and stuff and the explosions and the music. Everything about it's top notch. Okay. So I'm committing that as a separate commit. Make AI indices all relative. Okay, and I think I also can check in Viper Fire. Yes, because it's just changing his, his height slightly so he can sneak between rocks if need be. Whoa, over a hundred soundtracks and film scores. Death Stranding, no. Sweet. Another one to check out. Thank you, man. I'm loving all this, like, inspiration. Oh, The Dark Knight, Inception, Interstellar. The Lion King. <laughs> you got to give props just to The Lion King, right? There's a lot of, like, really catchy, memorable tunes that I'll remember for my entire life from that movie. Gladiator, The Last Samurai, damn, this guy, wow, I got respect for this guy for sure, 
Dude, he's been working since 85. Dang, Hans Zimmer. You're a stud. He's a creative stud. Cool, I will. Really? What kind of person was he? Okay. I think that's a pretty good start there. I basically have just found a way to create an area that has this new enemy on the overworld for the core game, but in a place that is appropriate. It's only in a dead end, and it's only in a difficult area. And there's only one of them on the overworld. There is a slight issue with the world seed cookie in that it kind of changes some of the flow patterns. It doesn't change the world, it just changes the pattern of enemies. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to think about this and try and find a way to Fix that so it doesn't really modify the world's flow patterns too much. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave that as it is. I'm going to go on to the next phase. Ken Burns, yeah? Oh, really? So he's a he's a documentary maker. Nice. Respect. Okay, and so the next phase is to go and apply some faux patterns, but only if you have the ring. And that's kind of a trick. This is going to tie right in with fixing this issue with the World Seed cookie. But let's see what we can do to try and create something like that right now. So, I mean, let's just. Start with something like this pattern. And we'll make this um, like dungeon advanced. Oh. Oh, you did? I didn't know you went to film school. In a way, you kind of are, though. Like, I know, I know film and video games are not exactly the same thing, but in my opinion, I think, like, they're similar in a lot of ways because film, film uses visual and audio, right? And, and also right like it gets at your emotions like the story of a film will get at your emotions and video games are similar like you're using video and you're using audio but and you're using and you're getting at people's emotions with some story but also what's what elevates it to the next level with video games is that it's tactile you're actually you know a person is actually interacting with the controller so they feel like they're part of the universe and then also they're making choices so it kind of makes it even more immersive in my opinion with video games so in a sense, you're kind of making the new form of films, in a way. Yeah, yeah. 
the AI, yeah, the Val tree, yeah, the, the, especially the behavior tree. Yeah, totally. Yeah, having a background in film or web dev and all that kind of stuff is super helpful for games. So dungeon advanced, let's. I wonder if that'll work, something like that. But okay, so this needs to be only if the player has the ring of difficulty. Which the play you don't know if the player has the ring yet when you're creating faux patterns. Which means it definitely this is gonna have to be. Hmm. Yeah, it is, right? There's a lot more of that these days with stars becoming part of games, whether it's their voices or they're actually acting and capturing their motion. Whoa, Del Toro too? That's awesome. I ho I always love seeing Del Toro in a movie. It's like, it's, he's, he's cool, man. I love him. And isn't he like, isn't Del Toro like directing or producing his own movies now? So here's the key part of this right here, has ring of difficulty. I don't think it's even going to be able to check that yet. But what would happen if we just ran this? All right, he directs. It's cool. I like seeing it when somebody's career path is is like that, you know, where they they have a lot of skill built up and and that they can act well, and you know they move into also directing or some other area of their their craft. Okay, so did that do any kind of? Oh yeah, four, six, eight just became dungeon advanced, but that it doesn't count because we wait. Let's see if this does actually work. It's not going to. Why am I even checking this? Yeah, so it still put that pattern even though we don't have the ring. So we need to create some stuff here in add foes in the world matcher. It's gonna have it in the world matcher pattern, it's just not recognize it in the add foes pattern. Yeah, I bet so, huh? Yeah, Uncharted, Last of Us, oh, yeah. I hear ya, right? I've seen, I've, I haven't played those games but I've seen a lot of like previews and clips from those games and they're very cinematic like super you know like the tension is like amazing you're like whoa you're watching the scene happen it's like it's pretty amazing be right back
I do think, so these, both of these things I'm working on here, adding a pattern to the overworld without affecting how things used to be, and then also adding patterns into the game if you have a certain item, I think these are both gonna boil down to the same kind of function. In fact, what I think is gonna happen is the game should ignore any of those special patterns and then do like a, a, another, basically go and replace some faux mobs with these special patterns. which is gonna require some reworking of this function here, add foes, which I'm not too excited about, but shouldn't overthink. Yeah, so this get possible foes is going to need to have something about check if hero has item. <laughs> yes, right? I don't think this will be a complete rewrite of foes. In fact, if it was, it would be way too difficult to do, but... I mean, just too time consuming to go check everything, you know, but I think I can do this simply enough. Like only if, like get possible flow, foes could have a Boolean to be like, this is the second pass. And then this other function right below get possible foes. Or this one, add foes. Hmm. Okay, so let me find out where or when it actually loads the player's items. So add foes is in create world. Create world is called from game. No, maybe it's not here. Maybe it's in game scene actually. Yeah, it's game scene. There it is. Yeah, so see, it creates the world, and then it loads the position, creates the main hero, and then loads the game. This is where it actually loads the player's items. So this wouldn't have worked in the in the past. No wonder it didn't have that. So basically, we would need to do something like this: like after you load the game, then go world. Like repl replace foes or add new foes or something like that. So we need to create some kind of new function like that, something like that. 
because there's where else is a call create world though? Is there some other significant places where it does this? Scenes? This is color layer, that doesn't matter. It's a debug thing. This is commented out. This is oh, this is the mapper logging world, so it doesn't matter. Um, what's this one? Overworld layer, that's also debug. Area test layer is also debug. Okay, good. So there's world, static create world, world create world. What's these though? Oh, that, right, this is when it's created, calling its own world create. This is its own world create outer method. This is just, oh, this is the inner method. Okay, good. So there is only one place where this is called. So yeah, that would make sense to, after you've loaded the game, call one more method that basically goes through knowing what play, what items the player has and going back and replacing some certain faux mobs with some more advanced faux mobs if you have the ring of difficulty and also replacing um, like one one area on the overworld and that would make sense like so I could actually go to the, this new faux pattern for this overworld advanced and also add in has life container one or something like that, right? So you have to have beaten the first dungeon for this advanced overworld pattern to even show up. Okay, I'm liking this. So what am I going to call this function? Replace foes isn't very descriptive. I could call it like ad, add advanced foes or add item dependent foes. This is too wordy. Believe it or not, replace foes, I think, is the best name for now. Okay, I'm diving in head first. I'm doing it this way without even thinking too much about it. I'm going to call this replace foes. I guess we'll go ahead and put this towards the end. Right? This is a very tricky thing sometimes, just what to name a variable or a function. Place foes. I guess that makes sense. So world matcher does have has pattern, has set pattern. Oh no, this does not have has item. I think I did that in the story system. This is where it does a lot of these has item things. Oh, could I use the story system for this? Oh man, that would be a lot better. If I just use the story system, would that make sense? Hmm. But no, the story system doesn't have the story system doesn't have the ability to check like doors, for example, to make sure it's in a a dead end. Man, this is a really heady stream, really programming heavy. Yeah, see here's where it's using has and stuff. I don't think it uses doors at all. 
This is an animation for doors, not a predicate. That's opening, both those were animations. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't. So yeah, we would have to put this in the world, not in the story system. Has key, has key, has item. Okay, so I might have to move these. Um, to let's just go ahead and start doing it. I think these need to be moved to the world matcher, which is the parent class here of this struct sorry node. So we'll move all those to there. We'll need to move the parsing. I guess we can start compiling that. This needs to go now in world matcher. Wait a minute, Fokine? Oh yeah, that, that's fine. Okay, so story system parse has, that's another. This needs to be long. In the world matcher. Makes me nervous changing so much. Can I make this, if I did parse as, I think I can make this a static function because world matchers is just a public struct. Good, yes, we can do that. Okay, so I don't need to add this to the header or anything. I can just make this a static function.
Okay, so since this makes me so nervous, <laughs> I definitely need to test this a few times. First, I need to get it to compile. But before that, I may actually need to take a break. I'm getting really hungry. Parse world. In fact, shoot, I should actually stop coding if I'm already hungry. It's going to be a minute before I can go get some food, so I don't want to get super duper hungry. Anyways, just to recap before I turn the stream off here, what I'm working on is adding some certain new flow patterns depending on your items. That's it in a nutshell, and that's actually quite a challenging thing because a lot of stuff has to kind of be reworked, and whenever you're reworking stuff, you got to make sure you're not introducing any new bugs. So, that's what we'll all be doing later today. So, once again, thanks for watching this video. Had a good time chatting with y'all. Lime, if you're still there, thanks for watching. Everybody else on YouTube, appreciate you. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll catch y'all next time. Wizard Food's going to get some food. Wizard Food's getting some wizard food. Yeah, you're about to fall asleep, I'm sure. Good to catch up, man. Definitely. And good luck. Good luck with Project Rhythmia and everything else, man, in school. I appreciate your friendship, man. See you next time.